Today, the Dayton does. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to Gen 7 Monotype Pokemon Battles. As you can see behind me, we have an Electric-type team today. Oh my god, Electric-type, probably one of the top types in my book, at least. Uh, basically, all you have to worry about as far as defending is uh, ground attacks. If you can avoid ground attacks, then you're good to go. That can easily be done with an item known as Air Balloon, which will uh, protect you for at least one attack. And uh, it, it's it's amazing what, what the electric type can do. Uh, there are so many good options as far as Pokemon to choose in the electric type sector. Um, but we've chosen our six. Hopefully it's going to go extremely well. Um, I remain hopeful because, as I said, electric, extremely strong type. Uh, except against ground, but we have things that'll work around the ground type as well. So, <clears throat> first Pokemon up, Electrode. Basically for his massive speed stat, he is the fastest electric type, uh, one of the fastest in the, in the game uh, overall. So, he's got more of a supporting move set. He's got Taunt, Explosion, and then the Reflect and the Light Screen. Uh, I've given him Air Balloon as his item instead of Light Clay, which probably is not the best choice. Uh, most people would go for Light Clay and then you just set up the Reflect to uh, block off the Earthquake. But I'm just a little worried about Electrode's uh, paper thin defenses. So hopefully we can prevent the enemy from setting up hazards with Taunt, get our Reflect and Light Screen up, and then explode in their face. Um, we'll see how it goes. He's got 252 HP. And then 252 speed, which is uh, pretty good for a supporting move set. I've given the extra four HP EV or the extra four EVs into attack, which will hopefully increase the damage of explosion. But um, it doesn't really. Explosion is still a pretty weak move. It's basically used to uh, get myself a free switch out of Electrode. I could also go for Volt Switch. Um, that might be a better thing. I'm not 100% satisfied with how this Electrode's built. But uh, it serves its purpose relatively well. I do like the suicide leads. It's mostly for the cool factor than anything else, you know? You turn around and you're like, L Electrode Explosion! And then he blows up behind you and you don't even look at it. Cool guys don't look at explosions. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Reflect and Light Screen are only going to last five turns. But hopefully it will be enough to bring uh, our team up and over the opponent. Sec po second Pokemon we have up is an Electros with Assault Vest. Uh, his ability is Levitate, which means he's not going to get hit at all by ground attacks, which is fucking outstanding. And then for his moveset, we have Acid Spray, Giga Drain, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower. So extremely offensive uh, moveset. Giga Drain is going to take care of those ground types that switch in. Acid Spray is interesting in that it lowers the opponent's special defense by 50%. So hit them with the Acid Spray. And then his Giga Drain, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower are all going to be hitting 50% harder. Uh, or you can just keep going for Acid Spray if that's what you like. And then it'll be hitting uh, 100%, 150%, 200% harder. And by then they'll probably be dead. So I've given him more of a, a bulky moveset. He's got 252 uh, HP and 252 special attack EVs. Really, really nice. Um, his... His special defense isn't uh, much to write home about, but with the Assault Vest, he could definitely take some special hits. I like Electros mostly for his ability. Um, having a Pokemon with absolutely no weaknesses on your team is just basically unheard of. Um, Electros is one of the only Pokemon to, to have that ability, uh, or that advantage, rather. <clears throat> so, with his with his wide, wide moveset and... Um, the ability to lower the opponent's stats and also not be hit super effectively. Electros, obviously one of the uh, the top slots for the team. If you haven't tried it out, I highly suggest it. Uh, third Pokemon we have is the Alola form of Raichu, which is actually an electric and psychic type, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, I've given it choice specs, and its ability is Surge Surfer, which increases its speed by 50% once uh, Electric Surge is on the battlefield, which is why we have Tapu Koko in the team who we'll talk about next. So, with Choice Specs boosting 50% and uh, Surge Surfer boosting 50%, Special Attack and Speed respectively, 
This Raichu is definitely a fucking operator as far as uh, taking down the opponent. Coverage moves, we have Thunderbolt, Psychic, Focus Blast, and Surf, which will basically hit anything that comes out on the field for at least neutral damage, but very likely super effective. Um, it's, it's really hard to play around this thing. Uh, the only reason the opponent might be able to play around it is because you've locked it in with choice specs, but um, I really do like that. Rather than uh, giving up a move slot for Nasty Plot, just, just switch the, the Pokemon out. You'll be fine. Uh, he has 252 Special Attack and 252 Speed EVs with a boost to his speed because, um, yeah, why not? If, if the uh, Electric Surge goes down or if it's not up on the field at all, you're definitely going to want as much speed as possible, even if it is up on the speed, uh, up on the field. Uh, more speed never hurt anybody. He might punch through uh, a little bit harder with more special attack investment, but overall I find that he's able to be quite a force, which is really, really nice. Uh, Tapu Koko, next Pokemon, he's basically the same as uh, the one that I had in my Mono Fairy type. He's got a Choice Band, U-Turn, Brave Bird, Wild Charge, Steel Wing, um, and all with that special, uh, 252 attack and 252 speed EVs. So really, really nice. Um, I find that this thing hits extremely hard, uh, and it doesn't get hit that often in return because it is so fast. It makes a great revenge killer. And on top of all that, it, uh, has the electric surge, which sets up Raichu, uh, to make a sweep of his own. So really, really nice synergy there. I really enjoy how, uh, the electric types kind of came together. There are just so many good electric types. There's uh, Zerkatry, who almost made it on my team. Um, you know, give him uh, an air balloon, and then he gets the beast boost every time he kills something, so he can boost his own special attack, and... Oh, there, there's a ton of good electric types. The, these are not the cream of the crop, as, as I stated early on by pointing out Electrode's faults, but um, they are definitely some of my favorites. So that's that's good enough for me. Tapu Koko is probably one of the uh, the best ones that you could choose, however, um, and especially combining with the Raichu Alola, that that's amazing. <laughs> Definitely give it a try if you're gonna work on your uh, your Mono Electric. For our fifth Pokemon, we have Rotom Wash with an Assault Vest. He's got uh, Bolt Switch, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and uh, Hydro Pump. He's got uh, 248 HP, 8 special defense, and 252 special attack. So it is kind of a weird spread. Um, basically the reason I gave him 8 special defense is so uh, things that boost based on the weakest defense will always get attacked. I'm looking at Porygon. Porygon switches in and uh, I think it's called download or something. And if you're special defense is lower than your defense, then he'll get a free special attack boost, which is not something that I want at all. So, um, just a little bit of, of playing around with the stats there, but, um, it doesn't make that much of a difference, honestly. Go ahead and do 252, 252, as usual, if you want. Um, Assault Vest, again, not, not anything to write home about. Um, obviously I do enjoy using the Assault Vest because it is on Electros as well. It just gives a little bit of extra bulk to a Pokemon uh, that might be in need of it. And while Rotom Wash isn't necessarily one of those Pokemon, it just never hurts. It never hurts to be able to take an extra hit or two. And um, I really do like Bolt Switch as a move. I don't have anything with U-Turn. Electros can learn U-Turn, and then I would have that uh, Bolt Switch combo, which is always really, really nice. I did think about doing that, but... In the end, I decided that it's just fine on its own. Thunderbolt, just in case you don't want to switch out from Bolt Switch. Um, and then Shadow Ball, kind of a nice coverage move. Hydro Pump, obviously the high damage moves. High risk, high reward. It does have an 80% chance of hitting. So uh, that 20% chance uh, seems a lot bigger than it is. <laughs> because, yeah, it misses a lot more than I would like. So. You won't see me using Hydro Pump on Rotom Wash that often. It's usually either a Bolt Switch or a Thunderbolt, unless the opponent is uh, able to resist or absorb that. Overall, really good Pokemon. Uh, Rotom Wash is one of the only Rotom forms that remains in the OU tier, uh, so that is one of the main reasons that I slapped it on this team. <laughs> the last Pokemon 
is a stun fisk, which a lot of people might uh, write off. They might laugh at that. And honestly, I, I'm not sure that it's such a good choice either. <laughs> but I love stun fisk. He, he's probably in, in my top uh, 10 or 15 favorite Pokemon these days, just because he is such a little dirt fish. Um, he's got leftovers and the static ability <clears throat> for his moves. I've given him Discharge, Scald, Sleep Talk, and Rest. So basically this thing is just a status spreader. You send it out and do either Discharge or Scald, depending on whether you're fishing for Burn or Paralysis. And then you can uh, do Rest. And while you're resting, you can also Sleep Talk, so you're able to fire off even more Discharges and Scalds. Overall, this thing, um, I wouldn't say that it's an extremely good choice, but it's an extremely interesting one. Um, I have had it paralyze, you know, half of the opponent's team, which is extremely effective, especially if they don't carry something with Heal Bell or something similar. So, he has 252 HP EVs, 252 Special Attack EVs. Honestly, um, some of those EVs might be better spent in defense, since he's not an attacker. He's, pardon me, basically fishing for status, but, um... Overall, I find he works extremely well. Um, he can take two or three hits, and that is enough to get yourself rested back up and sleep talking, and the opponent will be scared to switch anything in for uh, fear of either of those statuses. Neither of those are status you want to have, especially if you've got uh, physical attackers on the field or very fast sweepers on the field. Nothing's going to want to switch in against a sleep talking stunfisk, funnily enough. So, that is my team. We will see how it does. I remain pretty hopeful, mostly because of Tapu Koko and uh, the Raichu, Alola form of Raichu. Uh, Rotom Wash and Electros, honestly pretty good choices too. Stunfisk, Electro, they still have to prove themselves, but I'm sure they will. You know, there's, there's a reason that I put them on the team. They do have some merit, at least. Um, but we'll just have to see how it goes. So let's let's make it happen. All right, here we are uh, facing another mono electric type team, which is really really cool. He's got an Electrovire, which I'll probably need to watch out for. He's got a Thunderous and a Zapdos, but uh, half of our teams are exactly the same thing, which is really really interesting. So she leads off with a Rotom Wash, and I lead off with a Stunfisk. Uh, Rotom Wash misses his Hydro Pump right off the bat, which is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Do not trust that. It's not only a 20% chance to miss. 20% is fucking way huger than you think. Uh, second Hydro Pump miss. I know my Stunfisk can uh, eat at least one Hydro Pump and still live. Probably not going to eat a second one. But I'm hoping to get a Discharge, and then uh, once the Rotom Wash is paralyzed, we will be able to play around with it um, with the sleep talk and rest combo. So fingers crossed he doesn't go for Hydro Pump. He doesn't. He goes for Pain Split instead, which is probably a pretty good move. I'm thinking I should have packed that onto my Rotom Wash, but um, you know, hindsight's 2020. I'm at a pretty low HP now. I'm at uh, 70%, which I think I might get KO'd from a Hydro Pump, and Discharge is just simply not activating. Fortunately, uh, she's also not able to hit our Hydro Pump, so basically uh, three Hydro Pump misses out of the eight Hydro Pumps that you get in total. Not having any luck today, either her luck stat is extremely low or my luck stat is extremely high. So still uh, out here just discharging, eventually she gives up, switches out the Rotom Wash, probably frustrated, as I would be too. Like, what the fuck is up with that three misses in a row on Hydro Pump? Uh, especially if it would be a super effective hit. That's that's no good. I did expect her to finally hit a Hydro Pump there, so I, I put my Stun Fist to sleep with Rest. Um, I think she was hoping to get a Lightning Rod boost with a Zapdos, but uh, that is not going to happen. She tries to Volt Switch now, expecting a switch from my Stun Fist, but that is also not going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll the dice. With sleep talk, I'm basically wanting to get scald, and scald is exactly what I get. Look at that! Even with uh, 252 a special attack investment, Stunfisk is doing basically nothing as far as uh, damage to this Zapdos, which is super super sad. Um, I definitely will go back and change him to a more uh, 
defensive or specially defensive or even split build. Um, <clears throat> probably special defense because then I won't, won't worry about him missing a hydro pump. So we get a second Scald with our second Sleep Talk and get the burn on the Zapdos, which is really, really nice. I'm going to end up waking up this turn. I've basically uh, negated that Zapdos' leftovers, um, and she's going to switch that out of there, which I don't know why. Um, I guess I could keep Scalding, and eventually that thing would go down, but it's it's not a big deal. She brings in the Electrovire now, um, and I was basically not seeing that coming. I was testing for Lightning Rod Boost or hoping she'd switch back into the Road and Wash, and I give that Electrovire a 1.5 speed boost uh, because of his motor drive ability. So that's not good at all. He slams me with an Earthquake. I'm not going to be able to paralyze this thing with Discharge, however, I might be able to burn it with Scald. So uh, there's Stunfist trying to stead a spread a little more status, and we do get the burn, which is really nice. Her Electrovire is basically out of the match now. Um, it's good for nothing but switch fodder, as far as I'm concerned. If I had um, Earth Power or something on my Stun Fist, that might be a pretty good choice, um, but it doesn't really matter. I get Ice Punch to death. It has a, a critical hit on it as well, which probably wasn't even necessary. But I think Stun Fist did a pretty good job. As you can see, he's not completely worthless. <laughs> He spread some status around, he scared Rotom Wash out, and uh, <laughs> made or miss three Hydro Pumps, which is really, really nice. So um, she brings she brings her Electrobire back with Volt Switch as I go into Tapu Koko, and fortunately I also went for U-Turn this turn, so I'm going to see what her switch is before I have to make my switch. She brings in the Zapdos. Um, I'm still not sure if that thing's carrying Lightning Rod or something similar, so we're going to have to be extremely careful. Um, and I think that uh, a Psychic or Surf from a Loloform Raichu is going to do just fine, especially with the Electric Terrain up. Now we've got that 50% speed boost, 50% um, special attack boost from Choice Specs, so Raichu is about to uh, save the day right now. Uh, obviously, Zapdos is an extremely scary Pokemon, um, but not when you crit it. <laughs> so I smashed that thing with a critical hit Psychic. It probably wouldn't have been able to do that much to me anyways, um, but I'm just really happy to uh, to see it out of the way. I'm still worried about that Thunderous though. So she brings in her Alola Form Raichu now, which can take advantage of my Surge Surfing, um, but that's okay. I know she's probably not going to go for Thunderbolt or Psychic, I think she's going to go for Surf, same same moveset that I have, but no, she goes for a Bolt Switch, so her moveset is just a little bit different, she's definitely taking advantage of uh, the many many electric Pokemon that are packing Bolt Switch, luckily most of my Pokemon are going to weather that extremely well. So here comes the Thunderous, I am not looking forward to facing this thing, and it sets up a nasty plot right in my face which is not good at all. So here comes uh, Volt Switch. Gonna get um, Rotom out of there. I think that um, with Electric Surge on the field, Raichu is gonna be able to outspeed that thing. So that is uh, what I'm hoping, at least. <laughs> he does have a nasty plot now, which um, I really would hate to lose my Raichu this early in the fight. Fortunately, I'm able to Thunderbolt that thing into the ground. Um, Obviously could have gone for Psychic or something similar, but Thunderbolt also has the chance of Paralysis, which is always, always a nice thing. So, the Electricity disappears from the battlefield now, which uh, is just fine. She's got her Raichu back out here, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not scared of it, per se. Um, I know it's probably just going to do another Bolt Switch and run out of there, so I go back into Tapu Koko. Um, to set up the electric terrain, and there she goes, Volt switching out of the electric terrain that would in fact give an extreme advantage. From the, the way that it's hitting, uh, a not very effective hit doing almost 35% uh, damage, I'm thinking that that thing is also a Choice Specs build, but I'm not 100% sure quite yet. She brings in Tapu Koko now, it goes for a facade, which is an extremely interesting move. 
I'm going to U-turn out of here, save my Tapu Koko to set up at least one more electric terrain, um, but I could also rely on her Tapu Koko to do the same for my Raichu. Um, obviously my Tapu Koko has been setting up a lot of electric uh, battlefield for her, for her Raichu to search surf across, but here comes the electrode now. Um, I'm going to try and get some screens up, which seems like a relatively good idea. I did not lead with Electrode, which might have been a mistake, basically because I know <laughs> I'm going to end up exploding him at the end of whatever, getting the screens up. Um, taunt, it doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, useful in this match. So basically, once the screens are up, I'm just going to blow up in this thing's face. Hopefully it'll KO the Rotom. Um, but again, Electrode's attack stat is just fucking dismal. So I'm not too hopeful about that, but it will allow me to have a free switch. There's the explosion. <laughs> it doesn't even take him down from 30% HP. That is really, really sad. So um, <laughs> at least I get my free switch. But um, yeah, the Rotom's trying to pain split, which is uh, a good thing. I guess that uh, we were able to get the, the uh, electrode out of there. Since he's trying to pain split, I send back in my Tapu Koko, which uh, basically pain split is going to not be a good idea for him. It's going to hurt him and heal me. Um, I go for the U-turn, Choice Banded U-turn, which is able to take down the, the Rotom from 15%. Something that, uh, yeah, Electrode was unable to do, unfortunately. Uh, I do get my Electric Terrain back up, which is really, really nice, thanks to that free switch from Electrode. And my Reflect and Light screen are only going to last two and three turns, respectively. But I think that it's going to be enough to uh, pull me through in this match. So, she brings in her Raichu. We're having a surf Surge Surfing match here. Um, but I'm confident that with the screens up, I'm going to come out on top, no problem. She goes for the Volt Switch, which is resisted. And with the Light screen up, it's only going to do 15% of my health, which is super, super nice. I'm going to go ahead and start surfing because um, it's going to hit at least neutrally uh, everything on her team. Don't want to go for Psychic, don't want to go for Thunderbolt uh, because she also has a Psychic and Electric type just like me. Uh, so she's trying to wear down my light screen and reflect now by switching in the Electrobire as fodder, which is just fine. I think that um, we're going to do r relatively good things with this Raichu. The Surge Surfing is just absolutely amazing, especially uh, if you have the Tapu Koko on the team. Honestly, I probably wouldn't do it um, in an OU match or anything like that, which is a shame because it would be really nice to uh, to see some, some, some real use out of Raichu. Uh, you know, Pikachu sometimes gets a light ball or some kind of item like that and can kind of do some stuff if he gets the move, but generally he's way too slow to do so, and Alola Form Raichu kind of fixes that. Um, I wish that the Gen Pokemon, Gen 1 Pokemon could be uh, a bit more buffed out than they are. You know, we've seen a bit of a power creep in Pokemon in recent years. It used to be like 100 special attack was the tits and nothing could beat it, and now we have Pokemon with like 135 special attack, which 35% more, that's fucking insane. Um, her Tapu Koko hits my Raichu with a facade, um, and I'm able to take it down with a Surf, but she brings in her Alola Raichu and uh, is able to take me down with a Thunderbolt. That's fine. This match is basically in the bag. I bring in Electros just to show off his awesome Assault Vest action, and uh, even a critical hit, uh, I'd be able to weather three of those. Does 40% crit with a same type attack bonus Psychic. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the Acid Spray going now, which is uh, kind of Electros' signature move. I really do like Electros' with Acid Spray. And look at that, 25% from another Psychic, no problem at all. We were able to overcome a fellow Electric-type uh, player, which is really nice. I really enjoy uh, using the same Monotype and uh, beating the crap out of each other, seeing who comes out on top. And today, the Dayton does. <laughs> so, I hope that you've enjoyed, friends. If you would do something different with your electric monotype, do let me know. I'm always open to suggestion, and uh, I love to poke theorize about poker strategies with my poker friends. Uh, you know how it goes. 
I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. That is always, always appreciated. It helps the channel to get out there. We're coming up on a thousand subs, which is super exciting. And, um, yeah. I'll do something special when we break that threshold. Um, probably another song, something like that, because you know I love to sing it. That, that's not a good example. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. Thanks so much for watching. And until then, bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you my friends